part two. I want to find some more images. I want to go back then to Unsplash, which I have open still. Um, I really liked the picture of the Tory gates that I saw at the top. Maybe it was at the bottom. Let's see. Of course, my computer's just going to be all laggy now. I see it. Yeah, that's a really cool image. So for the assignment, I require two photographs in addition to the background image. So I need to find two nice photos. I hit download. It downloads it and puts it in my dock at the bottom. I click on it. It opens it up in Photoshop. Eventually, there we go. First thing I wanna do is check the image size and adjust it before I drag it into my travel postcard. So image size. This is a great website, this Unsplash. They're great images, high quality. Can't say enough good things about them. 300, okay? Now I wanna notice a couple things. It was 100 megs, that's like really unwieldy. Uh, Moodle can only accept a hundred megabyte files. So if one picture takes up a hundred megs, you're going to be in trouble. So you want to adjust the size of the photo to the size you're going to use it at. 300 DPI. I need to uncheck resample image. I want to use this photo. Oh, I don't know. My width is five inches. So maybe two inches. I'll put two in there. Ah, I want to have resample image on. I'm sorry. There we go. 300. If you don't have that checked on, it's going to change your resolution in addition to changing the width and height. So now it's two inches wide by one and a half inches tall. I know I want to crop out some of the side portion left to right. So I'm just going to make it two and a half because it will end up being smaller than that after I crop it. So, okay. To enlarge it on your desktop, Command Plus or Control Plus if you are in Windows. Let's see if I can do anything with cropping it. And let, yeah, I can. Okay, I didn't know if I had to unlock the background first. I just want to go to the Crop tool right here. Drag it in a little bit. Looks good. Do the same thing to the right hand side. Looks pretty good. I'm trying to balance the left space and the right space on either side of the Tory gates so that they're kind of even and symmetrical at this point. Um, I might drag up a little bit too and get rid of a little bit of the bottom space. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to okay it by going to the move tool up here in my left hand toolbar and say crop. Crop it. Crop it. Okay. I like the darkness. I don't want to adjust the, the darkness of the image. So if I drag this window off and away from my postcard that I'm working on, then if I'm in my move tool, like I am, if I click on the Tory gates, hold down my mouse, bring it up into the cherry blossoms image, it turns out that that looks pretty good. If I want to give that a special effect, I can go down, make sure I'm on this layer. If you want to make sure you're not selecting other layers, you can always turn them off. The background's locked. You don't have to worry about that one. Or you can keep it on and you can lock it as well. Um, but I don't really want to lock it. You lock it right here if you want to. So I want to go back to layer two. I want to name it because so far I've been bad and I haven't named anything. So I think. I don't know if I spelled that right, but that's okay. Name Cherry Blossoms while I'm at it. So, to put a stroke on it, go all the way down to FX. Stroke. Little window pops up. If you move your layer style window away from this window, you can apply a layer effect. I will say, I like that. I'll say, okay, you can adjust the size here. Maybe a little bigger, maybe a little smaller. Um, position outside versus inside. 
If you look at the stroke or the border, it's outside the photo now. It's inside the photo now. It just looks a little different, which you can tell a lot better if you have your underneath layers checked on, which I don't. You can change the opacity, which I don't want to do. Otherwise, I can just pick a lighter color anyway. And you can change the color if you want to, but I like black, so I'm keeping it. So, okay. Now I really want to turn the cherry blossoms on because I don't know what this is going to look like. I can add another effect as well. So if I want to add another effect, if I go down to stroke again, I can actually select any effect because all of them come up. Um, texture. That's a lot of texture for the photo. It's kind of a cool special effect. It depends on your purpose. So maybe not so much texture. If I go to size, it takes the uh, crackled kind of effect down a little bit. Uh, you like it. I can give it a drop shadow if I want to as well. And then you can adjust the drop shadow. You can make it bigger. Ooh, don't like it. Anyway, don't get too complicated. Try to keep it pretty simple. Um, somehow I've gotten rid of my stroke, so I'm just going to cancel it. Okay. And maybe just go right to texture if that's what I want to use. So. Mm. Let's go back with where I was. Okay. Texture. And I'm pretty much going to leave it. I'm just going to dial it down a little tiny bit. Okay, good. Done. Done with that part, right? Right. Deselect it. I'm in my move tool. I click off of it, nothing is selected. As long as I am on my Tory Gates layer, which I am, I can move that anywhere I want to. I can rotate it if I want to. As long as you have the six little squares around the outside, it's selected and your cursor turns into a little double-edged, double-arrowed curve, take it to a corner, curve it, and you're good, and deselect it. Piece of torn paper, so if I go back to unsplash and I type in under the search <sighs> it's just being very slow but you know why because I have this little box down here open I'll just do that later oh yeah torn paper I think you can probably find any image you want to in this Unsplash site. I know there's a really good one down here, so I see it. That's what I want. It's got three pieces. That doesn't matter. Download it. And it's in my dock here at the bottom. Click on it. It opens it up in Photoshop. on the wrong thing. Go through the goal. Okay. I think that it's behind here. There it is. Okay, good. Image size. That's what I want to see first. Image size. Go wipe over 72. 300. Resample image. Brings it down to 15 by 18. I know I'm going to rotate it, so I want it to be, click back on resample. If I go five wide, that's not going to be wide enough. I need to go seven, I think. What to say, yeah. I'm going to rotate the image. Counterclockwise. And I don't want it counterclockwise, I want it clockwise, so Command-Z, undo, image, rotation, clockwise, yeah, that's it. Okay, I only want to select the top piece of white paper. I'm enlarging it, Command-Plus. If I go to my magic wand tool, it's 90% tolerance, 
click up here in this white area, you can see the dotted marching ants only go around the top. So that's good. So if I go to my move tool, got marching ants and move tool, drag it away, click on it with the mouse, hold it down, drag it up into your file. And there's a pretty cool looking piece of white paper. You can change the size. I have to hold down shift and drag a corner to get it smaller. What I want to do is put the word Japan up here in this kind of torn paper look like a handmade Japanese paper. It's, yeah, that's okay. I kind of like that. I'm going to leave it. But I actually want to fill it with a color. I want to give it like a creamy color. But it wants me to first say, well, do you want to move it? Do you want to crop it? Do one thing at a time. So it kind of makes me do that. It's given me another layer. You can see that. It's called layer one. I'm going to name it paper. Just get in the habit of naming your layers. It's going to be a lot easier when you have 20 layers to find the right layer. So it's selected now. I want to select a color somewhere in this range. That's a nice color. Okay. So I say, okay. You can use the paint bucket, which is really nice and easy to use. Your color here is in the foreground. I can dump it in there and it fills it. That's pretty cool. I like it, but before I do that, I'm gonna undo that because I don't wanna lose this ragged edge here. So I'm gonna make a copy of the paper layer. If I click on the paper layer, I can hold, I can shift, right shift and do duplicate layer or I can go all the way to the bottom and duplicate layer as well. So there's a copy on top of a copy. The bottom copy is going to be the white, the ragged edge, the top paper copy. I want to drag up a little bit off of that because that's going to be like the creamy color and maybe I'll offset it a little, drag it to the side. And now I want to fill it. It still keeps that same color that I chose until I change it. So that's what I want more or less. So I'm going to stop it. I'm going to save it here at this point to save and stop recording and come back with part three.